Welcome to this next video in the playlist of principles of mechanical ventilation. Um, we should be starting to get pretty comfortable with the volume control ventilation now. Um, in this video, what I want to focus on is uh, the relationship between pressure and volume in, in volume control ventilation. And to do that, we're going to look at um, changes in lung mechanics and changes in the sort of properties of the lung um, in sort of different disease states, which are going to be hypothetical in, in this instance, but will will become more specific later on. So what we're going to look at is, when, okay, what happens when we're ventilating normal lungs? Okay, so here you see I've drawn a picture of normal lungs. Um, they inflate and deflate just normally. They don't have any sort of uh, restriction or, um, or impingement in their ability to inflate or deflate. So these are just normal lungs. This might be someone who's been intubated for non-pulmonary reasons. Maybe they just needed intubation for airway protection. And actually their respiratory system is completely normal. So we have no reason to expect they'd be challenging in any way to ventilate. So you have a normal set of lungs. And then we're going to look at what happens if you have a, a rigid set of lungs, a set of lungs which are, are more stiff and more difficult to open. Okay, so that, that might be someone who has like pulmonary fibrosis or fibrotic tissue in the lung or any kind of interstitial lung disease. Uh, th their lungs can become quite stiff and quite sort of rigid because they get thickening in their pleura, they get th uh, thickening in the parenchyma. Um, so those lungs become really hard to inflate, but they'll deflate quite quickly because they, they want to collapse downwards, right? So th this is what we call a decrease in compliance. The lungs are less compliant to us wanting to open them with the, the ventilator. Okay, so what happens when we have a situation of decreased compliance? And then what happens over on this side when we have a set of lungs that are sort of floppy or easy, easy to open or just um, a very uh, overly compliant? Um, so these will in this might be someone who's got COPD, um, usually emphysema, and has some um, emphysematous changes to their parenchyma. Again, it breaks down the structural connective tissue, which uh, allows the lung to have radial traction and hold itself together. So the lung generally becomes more um, more well, floppy is any really word I can think of, but it it doesn't hold itself together as well. So th these lungs become very easy to inflate. Oops, I want to do that. So these are very easy to inflate because there's not much kind of resistance to the inflating pressure. But as a result, they become they deflate very slowly because they don't have that they don't have that recoil which the the rigid lungs do. So we have different situations, and let's say we're ventilating somebody in volume control, and they change from one of these set of lungs to the other for some reason. For, for something happens, and their and their lungs go from normal to rigid. How what are we going to see on the ventilator when that happens? Okay, so that's the purpose of this video is to is to have a look at the relationship between volume and pressure in in volume control. So, as we've um, talked about in the previous videos, we're going to be in volume control. So I should just be able to put VC here now for you guys. Uh, we'll just do AC VC. The AC part doesn't matter as much, but we're in volume control ventilation. Let's say our tidal volume is 500 mils, as it has been for lots of our examples. Tidal volume doesn't have to be 500 mils in any patient, really, but um, we have specific tidal volume ranges that we use, but this is just a nice, easy number to, to look at, okay? So let's say our tidal volume is 500 mils and our rate is whatever. It doesn't matter much for this example by 10 breaths per minute. Okay, so, and we are ventilating our normal lungs over here. So this is, a, this is where we start. Okay, and as a result of that 500 mils, remember how volume control works. The ventilator in volume control says, I'm gonna put 500 mils of tidal volume into this patient, whatever happens. Okay, so the, the ventilator's only concern is getting 500 mils into that patient's chest. Now, we, we set certain parameters where that can't happen, which we'll get to in a second, but the, the ventilator wants to put 500 mils per breath into the patient. Okay, so as a result of that 500 mils, the pressure in the patient's chest is in the patient's lungs is is going to increase, right? That's just Boyle's law. Right? We'll write that out. P1, V1 equals P2, V2. As you increase the volume in this system, the pressure in the system is going to proportionally increase. That's it's just physics. So 
as we put 500 mils into this normal patient, the pressure in the circuit is going to go up. And you'll remember in the video on volume control, we measure peak inspiratory pressure. In, uh, the ventilator measures it, and we record it, and it's something we report to physicians, and we something we like to keep an eye on, right? So let's say our peak inspiratory pressure, PIP, when we're inflating these normal lungs with 500 mils, let's say that's, uh, I don't know, let's just say 20 centimeters of water. Okay, so that's a relatively sort of innocuous uh, peak pressure to have on a ventilator. Um, so let's say our peak pressure is 20 centimeters of water when we're putting 500 mils into these normal lungs. Okay, now we can look at this two ways now. We can either say what happens if this same patient, it may be easier to do that actually because then we take the baseline of 20. Let's say the same patient has something happen to them, whatever that is, that's for later videos, something happens to them to make their lungs rigid, to make their lungs more stiff and harder to open. Maybe they get some inflammation in the, in the pleural lining of their lungs and that makes the lungs much stiffer. So what happens then when we try to put the same 500 mils into lungs that are harder to inflate, they're more rigid, okay? Well, you can probably imagine that the pressure is gonna go up, right? It's, we're still gonna put 500 mils in, this lung is still gonna get 500, okay? But as a result, the trade-off is that your peak inspiratory pressure is gonna be higher. Maybe that goes to, I don't know, 30 centimeters of water. And this can go up higher than that. So when this starts getting really high, we start getting worried about that because high pressures in the lung can cause damage to the lung tissue. So this is something we keep track of. So we can see that by going from a set of normal lungs to a set of rigid lungs, this may happen, let's say someone gets a pneumothorax while on the ventilator, that that's gonna change the compliance of the lungs. It's gonna make the lungs harder to open because they have external pressure from that pneumothorax pushing down on the pleura, okay? So that, that makes the lungs harder to inflate. So now we see that we've gone from a peak pressure of 20 to a peak pressure of 30. So we know then that this person's compliance, I should write that word out, compliance. We'll do a whole video on compliance, but compliance is just how easily the lungs open. An increase in compliance, the lungs open more easily. A decrease in compliance, the lungs open less easily, okay? So we know that this patient's compliance has changed because before we were putting in 500 mils into this normal patient and their peak pressures were 20, okay? Whereas now we're putting 500 mils still because it's volume control ventilation, 500 mils into this rigid, insane patient whose lungs are now more rigid and our peak pressures have gone to 30, okay? So you can see that in volume control ventilation, the variable factor is pressure, okay? So the, the, we're gonna be getting 500 each time unless a, certain, unless a certain condition is met, which I'll get to in just a second. Um, we're gonna be putting 500 into these patients each time. Right? But the difference is, is that in this patient, the only 20 centimeters of water pressure is, is generated as a result of that inspiration. Whereas in this patient who has stiffer lungs, 30 centimeters of water is, developed, is generated because the lungs are harder to inflate. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing over here and we're gonna put 500 mils into this patient. Or let's again say it's the same patient so we can use our baseline of, of this. Let's say that for some reason, uh, this patient's become more compliant. Their lungs are, are, are now easier to open. They're, they're, they've become more floppy as we use here. Um, so they're gonna be easier to inflate, right? So now when we put our 500 mils in, it's not gonna generate much pressure in the lung. It's, it's not gonna generate as much as it did for a normal patient, okay? So their peak inspiratory pressure might actually be lower now. Let's say it goes down to 15 centimeters of water, okay? So because this lung is easier to inflate, it's more compliant, putting 500 mils into this lung is easier than it was when you put it into a normal lung, okay? So their compliance has increased. So we, from going, going from this normal lung to a lung which is easier to inflate, we've seen a drop in our peak inspiratory pressure, okay? So you might think that sounds good, right? Like that sounds like it's a good thing. Peak pressures are bad, they can cause damage in the lung, and if we have lower peak pressures, then surely that's good. Why do we have a sad face over here? Well, it, it is good in that inspiration becomes much easier, but the lungs deflate 
more slowly, right? They don't have that recoil. Uh, breathing is a two two way street, right? You have to inhale then exhale. So the lungs will inflate really easily, yeah, but they're also going to be floppy and not very rigid on on exhalation as well. So they're going to deflate very slowly. And what's going to happen is maybe not all of the gas is going to come out when they when they exhale. And then we're going to put the same 500 in again the next time they get a breath. And then maybe it all doesn't come out because it, they exhale really slowly. So eventually the lungs just start getting more and more and more filled. And then they get what we call hyperinflated. So that's what you can see here, the blue line showing the sort of flattened diaphragms here and the lungs are slightly higher lung volume, right? Because they're, because they're not exhaling properly, because they're so easy to inflate, but they deflate so slowly that the gas doesn't get a chance to come out. And then interestingly, when they do start to get like this, where they become hyperinflated, they end up going all the way over back to this side. Then they start behaving like rigid lungs. Okay, so the, the point of this video is just to show you that in volume controlled ventilation, let's just arbitrarily change color here so we can make a point. So in volume control, comma, pressure is variable. Okay, the volume is going to be 500 mils. Uh, the pressure is going to vary depending on what the, the properties of the lung. Now, I said that I would give you one example on when it maybe it won't be 500 mils. So you can imagine that if something changes in the lungs and these pressures start going up, this peak industry pressure might start rising rapidly and we may not know about it, right? So in order to protect the lung against that, we set on the ventilator, we set a high pressure, high pressure limit. Okay, and this is just an alarm, essentially, and it's when that alarm goes off, um, we've reached a high pressure limit. And let's say we set that at, uh, I don't know, let's say around 40 centimeters of water. So what that says is if during this inspiration, we reach 40 centimeters of water of peak pressure in the circuit, the ventilator will cycle the breath. Okay, so if, if met, inspiration ends, okay, regardless of how much volume we put into the chest. So let's say this patient has really, really stiff lungs and we're putting in 500 mils, but by the time we've put 300 mils in, the peak pressure is 40 centimeters of water, the ventilator stops the breath because it says that not exceeding that pressure is more important than putting in 500 mils of volume. Okay, so this is this is our one kind of exception, is if you meet the high pressure limit of the circuit of the ventilator, then 500 mils won't be delivered. But in all other instances, that 500 milliliters will be delivered to the lungs. The question is, how much pressure will be generated as a result?